Andrew worked himself so hard to the point where his fingers, like his hands or like the calluses on his hands would start bleeding just by him holding his drumsticks and banging them so hard, just practicing, you know, just practicing so hard to the point where, you know, his hands would start bleeding and this man would be drenching in a pool of sweat. And that just showed me like, wow, like how far can a person really go to achieve the dreams that they want to achieve? And it, and it kind of just makes you question, like, is it really worth it? Hello, hello, folks. This is me, Corey the Jokester, once again, coming at you for another episode of Anything and Everything. Do you all love movies? Because I sure as well do. I love them a lot. I loved them since I was six years old. I always told myself whenever I saw those names in the credits, you know, one day I'm going to be out there too. And I believe it, and I believe that it will be achieved. But for now, we are going to take a look at one of my most beloved films of all time. This is actually top tier for me. Actually, one of my favorite, if not ultimate favorite, movies of all time. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to Whiplash. Now, in the previous episode, I mentioned this movie quite briefly. You know, just to talk about the type of movies that I would like to make. And I kind of just wanted to go more in depth as to why I consider this movie, Whiplash, to be one of my ultimate favorite movies of all time. And in case you haven't seen Whiplash, um, it came out eight years ago, back in 2014. Director Damien Chazelle, he directed it. He's a really great director, in my opinion. He directed this movie. He directed La La Land. He did First Man with Ryan Grossling. He also did, um, I think he's doing another one, I believe. Uh, his next film was called Babylon, which is going to be set in the 1920s on Hollywood. And basically just like the Roaring Twenties or whatnot, contributing to that time period. And uh, yeah, it's coming out later on this year, I think Christmas. And I can't wait. You know, I can't wait to check it out because I think Damien Chazelle, he's a very fantastic director. I said Ryan Grossling. I meant Gosling. My bad. I, I always get his last name confused. I always add an R after the G for some reason. Ryan Gosling and First Man. But that's not the movie we're going to talk about today. We're going to be talking about Whiplash. Now, Whiplash is a very unique film to me in, in a way that it, it basically shows just how far a human being can actually go to achieve the dreams that he wants to achieve. Even if it takes enduring physical abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, and even physical pain inflicted on himself, just by practicing way too hard and putting too much strain and stress on his body. Man, whew, the film is really deep and we are going to get into it right now. So Whiplash tells the story of this young, ambitious drummer who goes by the name Andrew Naiman, who is a first year student at this musical um, conservatory in New York City. And he has this hope and dream of becoming one of the greatest drummers um, like his idol, Buddy Rich, who is a famous jazz drummer um, from back in the day. And uh, he's very, very talented. Uh, the jazz drummer and uh, Andrew Naiman, the character played by Miles Teller, really good actor. He he shows to have some promise, even like in the first two to three minutes of the film. It opens up with him just basically in this little dark room, just playing the drums. And he's practicing real hard, like he is basically devoted to his craft. And that's what I like about him. Like he's very devoted, very determined. 
he, you know, he starts off as like just very ambitious. He's trying to be one of the greats, you know, like Buddy Rich and Charlie Parker. Um, Charlie Parker was another um, fantastic uh, jazz drummer from back in the day. Really talented. But Andrew soon meets uh, this man played by J.K. Simmons. His name is Terrence Fletcher. And boy, whoo! Terrence Fletcher is a very controversial music teacher who leads this jazz band and he believes in this philosophy of pushing people to go beyond what's expected of them and to, you know, be great and bring out the greatness within themselves. But the method that he uses to teach this um, ideology and uh, this lesson to his students, it, it's very traumatizing and very, very questionable. You know, he abuses his students, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, um, verbally, like he will abuse them to the core to pull out the, the best in them. And I feel like it, it's, it's a very bizarre take on exemplifying a certain message of, you know, achieving greatness. And it, it's all the more interesting in a way that you see this guy, uh, Terrence Fletcher, as, you know, this celebrated music person, but yet he's so controversial in this conservatory because of his methods and his ways of teaching. And in the movie, uh, Terrence gives um, Andrew, played by Miles Teller once again, um, he gives Andrew an opportunity to prove himself in the opening act of the film. Like, he basically tests him and lets him, you know, play a certain rhythm or whatnot. And he invites him out to join his conservatory, to join his band. And so he does. And <laughs> that man, Andrew, learns quick. He learned pretty quick that, uh, yeah, this man, Fletcher, is, it's no one to mess with, no one to joke around with. Because the moment he had his first session with him in his class, this man, Terrence Fletcher, hurls a chair at Andrew, all because he was rushing and dragging a beat to a song that they were rehearsing to play at this upcoming concert that they were having. And so for those who don't know, rushing and dragging is fairly simple within the concept of music. When you rush a beat, that means you're playing ahead of the tempo. When you're dragging a beat, that means you're playing behind the tempo, you're playing too slow. And so Andrew Naiman, um, the protagonist here uh he was kind of doing a little bit of both but he was just unsure which one he was doing and so this man terrence he hurls a chair at him and he rushes towards him humiliates him in front of the whole class and slaps him slaps him silly and makes this man tear up and to me i just found that performance um all of these performances by the way by these actors are really brilliant and they're really 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 well performed, really talented, very impeccable. The, the performances are very impeccable in this film. And uh, Damien Chazelle, he does a really wonderful job directing these actors because they, they bring out a lot of emotion in these characters. And so Terrence, uh, he's basically um, Andrew's worst nightmare. Like Andrew just wants to, you know, he just wants to be a great jazz drummer. You know, he, he's not trying to go through all these hoops and hurdles. And, and so... You know, Terrence gives him a run for his money and it, it and it gets so bad to the point where Andrew breaks up with his girlfriend because he's he wants to devote more of his time to proving himself to this one man who thinks that the words good job are very harmful in the English language. And so he breaks up with her, which to me, I was like, eh, you, you didn't have to do all of that. I mean come on now. I mean, she wouldn't have been a distraction. I mean, that's just my opinion, but there's nothing wrong with trying to be great at something, but it's not worth taking a toll of your, um, your mental and physical health. It's really not, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of felt him in a way because I used to be like that with, um, editing, like whenever I would make a film back in the day or make a short on my YouTube channel, I would stay up countless of nights, just editing, you know, slaving myself away. And although I, um, 
I got the job done. I also like made myself very exhausted in the process. I didn't really get a good night's rest like I should have, you know, and it, it kind of made me feel like, wow, like I'm putting all this energy into this work, but what about me? You know what I'm saying? I have a life, you know, my life comes first. And so watching this movie really taught me to basically, you can strive to be great, but it's not worth you putting yourself in any danger in any way. And that's one of the uh, implicit meanings that I got from the film. It, it definitely taught me how to be more devoted to my craft, but at the same time, be more open-minded to other things as far as like, not just solely slaving myself to only my craft. You know what I'm saying? Like just, there's nothing wrong with taking a little break. There's nothing wrong with putting things to a side and then coming back to it later. There's really nothing wrong with that. And so I wanted to basically prove myself that yeah, I am capable of making good stories. So that's another reason why I really love this movie because I relate to Andrew a lot. Andrew worked himself so hard to the point where his fingers, like his hands or like the calluses on his hands will start bleeding just by him holding his drumsticks and banging them so hard, just practicing, you know, just practicing so hard to the point where, you know, his hands would start bleeding. And this man would be drenching in a pool of sweat. And that just showed me like, wow, like how far can a person really go to achieve the dreams that they want to achieve? And it, and it kind of just makes you question like, is it really worth it? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it really worth putting a toll on your physical health and your mental health? Like it'll drive you to an insanity. You know what I'm saying? And it just, it just made me reflect on my particular reality. Like, is it really worth me doing this? Like not necessarily making films and shorts and, you know, doing what I want to do, but is it really worth me putting myself in harm's way in the, in the process? Like, yeah, I mean, it's okay to miss maybe a few hours of sleep, but to go like maybe two consecutive nights because you, you know, you're working on this grandiose project and you know, you want it to be good and you're like, you're, you're losing sleep a lot of sleep because of that. It's like, yeah, that's, that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? I really like how the film, um, it shows the, the horrors of working hard to a point where you feel like you're about to fall. You know, you feel like you're about to collapse. You know, you, you feel like, you know, you have this one opportunity to be great and you've gotten accepted into this very prestigious institution. And you want to, you want to prove yourself to, you know, these high class elites that you are one of the greats and you want to be even greater, you know, but at the same time, it's like, like I said before, like, is it worth it? And the film kind of makes you think about that after you've finished watching it. Like it, it kind of makes you think, you know, and in my previous episode, I was telling people like, I, I like to make films that will make people think and question reality. And I think whiplash does a really fantastic job of that. It really shows like the toll that one endures to, you know, achieve their dreams and goals. And JK Simmons does a really wonderful job um, as the villain or excuse me, antagonist, uh, Terrence Fletcher, you know, because even though you come to hate Terrence Fletcher, you kind of understand like, okay, I get, he wants the best for his students and he wants them to be great. But at the same time, you don't have to abuse them like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do that to prove a point. Just be patient with them to, you know, work with them. Isn't that the whole point of being a teacher? But I like how JK Simmons performance really, really stands out. In my opinion, it really stands out a lot. And it's actually made me fear him quite a bit <laughs> from then on, because, um, it's already enough. I had to endure him as J Jonah Jameson from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. But to see him as this different person, um, Terrence Fletcher from Whiplash, it's like, oh man, he, 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 he has really embodied a monster, a bigger monster than what he was in, you know, the Spider-Man trilogy. <laughs> and I find that really unique. You know, it gives him a lot of range as an actor. And now he's playing an even bigger monster in Invincible, you know, the, the animated show on Amazon Prime, like Omni-Man. 
you really got to watch that to understand what I'm talking about. Like they, they just, they, they, they typecast this man in really complex roles. Like they, like they typically typecast JK Simmons as I've noticed this too with, um, you know, Jay Jonah, Jameson, uh, Terrence Fletcher and Omni man, they make him out to be this man who has a very highly confused morality like it's always a moral ambiguity with him, like a moral complexity. Like he's not sure who he wants to be. Like he's not too bad. He's not too good. He's just like morally confused. And I think that's what this character, Terrence Fletcher was. He was just morally confused. Like he's a man who wants the best for his students, but doesn't know how to convey that message in a proper way. Like there was even a student in the movie, um, we don't see this student as all, at all, but he's just mentioned that there was a student who committed suicide because of the way that he he endured all the torture and the the trauma that, you know, Terrence Fletcher bestowed on him when he was a student in his class, you know, before Andrew Naiman was. And um, it kind of just comes to show like, dang, this teacher was very maniacal to the point where he caused a student to kill himself i'm like dang that's really deep like i i have a you know i had a professor in college um uh she's a very very nice professor you know very very nice lady you know very very insightful but but i just feel like the way that her her teaching methods sometimes can be very ambiguous and very complex to the point where it kind of makes you question whether or not you're good enough to even make films or even, you know, do what you want to do in life. And a friend of mine, we talked about it since we had, we had her classes um, before in college. Um, she was telling me how um, it didn't put her in the suicidal state, but it made her feel like she wasn't good enough at anything. Like it, it, it just made her feel like she was just ready to call it quits, like just quit on everything. And I kind of felt her pain because, you know, it, it, it just made me realize like, wow, you know, this, this one person is kind of bringing me down. But at the end of the day, I can't, I can't let this one person bring me down. And I've, I've gotten PTSD from, you know, those classes. I'm not going to lie. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the insight that, um, that those classes have brought on me. But at the same time, I, all I can remember, you know, was the stress and the, uh, the anxiety that I felt taking those exams and quizzes and doing those assignments because the, the methods of teaching just were very complex to the point where it lowered my self-esteem. And I still have PTSD from that to this day. And my friend, she still has PTSD from that to this day, you know? But we're, you know, we're getting better. I mean, we're trying to, we're trying to navigate through it. And, you know, I say all that, not, not as a way to sneak this or, you know, harp on my, uh, my film professor. Like I said, she's a very, um, you know, she is controversial, but you know, she's very insightful. You know, there are conversations that we've had in the past where they were really insightful and really thought provoking, but I say that to compare it back to this teacher, uh, Terrence Fletcher in a movie. Um, Terrence wasn't so nice. You know, he, he wasn't as nice as, uh, this professor that I, I just told you about. Um, he knew what he was doing. He was aware of what he was doing and he thrived off of what he was doing to his students. And I felt like, you know, teaching like that, you're, you're definitely bound to, you know, give someone PTSD or make them feel like they're not good enough. And I like how the movie just kind of, it's a very emotional film. It definitely peels off emotional layers. And another thing I like about the film is that it, it is not afraid to portray these um, mental health issues and stress issues like it is. It is not afraid to tell it like it is, you know. It, 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 it just comes to show like how far can a person push him or herself to the point where they feel like they're about to collapse. And I relate to the movie heavily. Like Andrew Naiman was me at a point of time. 
And it's kind of still me now, but I'm working to get out of that. I'm working to get out of that mindset of, oh, you know, in order for me to be great, I have to work nonstop. I'm trying, guys. I really am. I'm trying to tell myself, hey, slow down a little bit, you know, enjoy your life. Enjoy your time being young because you're not going to be young forever, you know. And uh, there are some great musical performances in, you know, this film as well. I heard that Mouse Teller in an interview once said that um, he actually learned to play the drums when he was young. So that proved to be a great asset to the film when they were filming it at the time. And uh, fun fact, Whiplash was actually a short film before it became an actual feature. Um, J.K. Simmons was also in the short, but they used a different guy for the role as Andrew Naiman. So it was actually a short it was made back in 2013. It went into Sundance and they really liked it. So um, producers, they looked at it, they purchased it, and it was made into a film one year later. And I'm glad that it was made because, like I said, it's one of my one of my top favorite films of all time. Like, I, I would even put it in the top three. Whiplash will be one of them. That's just how much in love that I am with this film. Like I'm that much in love with the film like that, because like I said, it comes to show that, you know, it shows that that human sacrifice of, okay, I got to sacrifice my time. I got to sacrifice people to get to where I need to go in my life, or excuse me, in this case to where I want to go in my life. And I feel like it, 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 it definitely does a really great job at showing the problems that, that mindset can entail, you know, and I definitely love how um, Andrew gets his redemption in the end as well. You know, he plays that very, very heartwarming solo piece with his drum um, in the end. You just have to watch it to, you know, fully understand. And the ending, the ending is really open to your own interpretation. It, it ends in the way to where um, Terrence Fletcher is finally impressed by Andrew's performance, solo performance at the, uh, the concert. And, um, it ends with Andrew giving his final piece on the drums. Like he's banging the cymbals and he's banging the snares. And then he waves his arm up and he slams the sticks on the drums and cut to black. The movie's over. I, that's one of the best endings I've ever seen in a film of all time. And I feel like he, I'm glad that he, he didn't kill himself like that other boy did earlier in the, in the film, which when it was mentioned, like I said, we don't see it happen. We don't see this kid. He's mentioned. We, he is mentioned. Um, I'm glad how they showed that contrast and how Andrew evolved over time because he was on the brink of giving up for a minute, but he basically went back on stage and proved Fletcher wrong. And I'm, I was like, yes, you play that solo piece, my guy, you play it. And I was rooting for him. Like Damien Chazelle gave me a character to root for it. And I'm glad he did because like I said, I relate to Andrew so much. I relate to him in so many ways. And, you know, I feel like this movie needs a lot more attention. Not that it doesn't have attention already, but I, I feel like more people need to watch it because they can learn something from it. They can learn a thing or two about what it takes to actually push yourself to get to where you want to go and how far you're willing to push yourself, but at the same time, not putting your own health at risk to achieve those goals, you know? It And it, it, it shows that, you know, the human obsession for greed and for, you know, this conquest of success, you know, it, it's, it's really, it can be dangerous at times if, if we don't, you know, if we don't steer it carefully, you know what I'm saying? If we don't drive it carefully, you know, it, it could put us in many different negative directions. Like this dude, Andrew, right? He was so dedicated to being great that he literally got into a car wreck because he was trying to make it back in time for a musical concert that he was trying to do. And he forgot his drumsticks basically. And so he went, he went, he had to rent a car basically to get the drumsticks that he left, um, at a dealership, like at, or at a car place that he was trying to rent a car because the bus that he was riding on to get to the concert broke down 
And so when he got to Terrence Fletcher and, and the band, Terrence was like, oh, well, you know, if you want to prove yourself, you know, prove to me that, you know, you can make it back in time or whatever, because if not, then we're starting without you or whatever. And so he left the sticks and, you know, he had to go back and get it. And he got into a car wreck all because he was that dedicated to making it back on time to impress this, you know, monster of a teacher that he had. And you know what the person that he got into a car wreck did? The person tried to check on him. And you know what this man did? He kept going. This person even offered him emergency personnel. But he said, nope, I got to get to this concert. <laughs> I got to dip because I got to prove this man wrong. And the dude was bleeding all over too. I'm talking like car dented up, glass tearing up like all over the place, like shattering all over the place. Like, I think it even flipped over. And somehow he managed to get out and... You know, dude tried to stop him and was like, hey, you know, you sure you don't need a hospital? You sure you don't need the ambulance? And this man, Andrew, was like, nope, I need to get back to this concert. I got to go. This is really important. So he just leaves the car in the middle of the road and he runs back to the uh, he runs back to the observatory, I think, or wherever he went or the auditorium where he had his concert at. And, you know, it, it just comes to show you like, dang, like you would really put your own physical health at risk just to prove a point, just, just to prove that you want to be the best of the best. Like you got to slow down my guy. Like, and I, and I loved how, you know, like I said, I love the revolution of this film. You know, it, it just comes to show like, man, this, like if you watch the beginning of the film and then watch all the way to the end, it just comes to show you like this man worked really hard to get to where he ended up at. Like, like this man really put forth the effort and the time but at the same time, it makes you ask yourself, was it worth it? You know what I'm saying? It definitely challenges you to think, okay, if I want to be great at something, is it really worth me sacrificing every single thing that I have, including the relationships that I have with people just to get to that point? I feel like, you know, it definitely does a great job at making people think and contemplate and reflect off of that certain reality. And the abuse that Andrew endured, it, it just made him stronger in the end. And it definitely, it, it, to me, it definitely serves as a, as a motivator. It definitely comes to show you like, you know, hey, there are people in this world who will try to bring you down and make you feel like you're not good enough, but you got to show these people wrong. You know what I'm saying? When the abuser abuses you, you got to become better than the abuser. Now, you don't necessarily have to be abusive back, but you got to overcome those struggles and be better. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I love about this uh, psychological drama here. Both Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons do a fantastic job in their performances. And it's all thanks to Damien Chazelle and his wonderful directing chops. I really appreciated what he did with the film. And I really appreciated the film for what it became. Like I said, it started off as a short film back in 2013. It was like an 18 minute short film at that. And then it you know, at Sundance, you know, it got the recognition and all these different investors, they were investing in it and produced it. And it became a real movie the next year in 2014. And I'm really glad it got the awards that it was nominated for and, it, and that it received, like it received an Academy Award for Best Film Editing and Best Sound Mixing. And J.K. Simmons, you know, well-deserved, he got, um, he got a, he got an award for, you know, best supporting actor. He got his award for best supporting actor. And like I said, it was well-deserved, really well-deserved. You know, his performance was spectacular. Everyone's performance in the film was just spectacular. You know, props to everybody who worked on that film. Cause man, that, that is one of the best pieces of cinema I've ever seen in such a long time. I'm talking like the writing, the directing, the acting, cinematography to editing it is all just gorgeous even the sound mixing like they said the sound mixing i can see why he got an award for sound mixing you know it's well deserved it's it's it is really well deserved and i think this is one of damien chazelle's best films to date i wasn't really a big fan of la la land like that i was you know i like whiplash better in my opinion that's just my opinion though i like whiplash you know, this is probably one his best work, in my opinion. 
and I'm glad that it got the recognition that it got. And like I said, it needs to get even more recognition. I encourage every band student, every musically inclined person, or, you know, every moviegoer, just anyone in general, please watch this film. It's called Whiplash. Please watch it. It is a wonderful, fantastic film. Very, very worthy of getting all the recognition that it's gotten already. Please watch it. You'll learn a lot. Um, it's on Showtime if you have Showtime in your premium subscriptions. So you can always watch it on Showtime. And it's also, you know, it's also out there on the worldwide internet. So, um, yeah, you can check it out. Check it out anytime you want. But um, thank you all for tuning in and this glorious movie review. I had a really fun blast sharing my thoughts on Whiplash, one of my greatest movies of all time. And uh, until next time, take care.